So question five then from paper two of the 2015 new hire, a circles question for eight marks. Quite a nice little circles question. And quite honestly, similar to plenty that you should have practiced beforehand. Anyway, what's it got? It gives you the equation of this first circle in that expanded form there. It gives you the center of this second circle. I'll put that over here. That's 9, 11. And for part A, for four marks, it says, what's the radius of this larger circle, C2? Well, the first thing would be, from this, extract the information about that circle. What's its centre? I'll just call the centre C1, even though that's actually the name of the circle. And there's only one mark for stating this, so I'll just go in with, it'll be the negative of half of those. So that'll be at negative 3, negative 5. That's a mark. And R1 for the, its radius. Well, the radius squared would be, although you may put the big square root down, I'll just do that so we're putting the big square root down, would be the centre squared, so that's the negative 3 squared plus the negative 5 squared minus the number at the end. Well, that's 9 taken away 9, that disappears. So the radius squared is the same as 5 squared, so the radius is 5. Again, there's just one mark it says for stating 5. So what's the radius of the larger one? Well, they lie in a line. I know the coordinates of the endpoints of that line. You can work out the distance C1, C2, the distance between the centres. Well, that would form this little right angle triangle, which you could draw down separately and just put the numbers into it. That centres at negative 3, negative 5. So just looking at that, negative 3 to 9 makes that 12 along. Negative 5 up to 11 makes that 16 up. So you could just say that distance between the centres squared would be 12 squared plus 16 squared. There's only one mark for this answer. Or you may put it down the long way. 9 take away, maybe I'll do that. 9 take away the negative 3 squared for the difference in the x's. And 11 take away the negative 5 for the difference in the y's. But in the end it's just going to be 12 squared plus 16 squared. And that little triangle is going to be very handy for other things like finding this point if it was required or some other point. Well, that's 12 squared, that's 16 squared, or you may just say that's 4 times 3, that's 4 times 4, so that must be 4 times 5, so the answer's 20 because you've got a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Maybe I should just have done that. But I've written all this down now. So that would be 400, just thinking from that. So C1, C2 is going to be the square root of that, which is 20. However you get 20, it's just one mark. One mark left then. So what's the radius? There's radius 1, that's radius 2. The two of them must add up to 20. R1 plus R2 must equal 20. So R2 must be 20, take away the 5, so R2 is 15, and that's the fourth mark. Now part B. A third circle C3 is drawn such that both C1 and C2 touch this circle C3 on the inside internally. So if that touches the inside and this touches the inside, it must be a circle that goes around the two of them like this. And it says such that the three centres will be collinear and they would have to be because it must make a symmetrical system. Determine the equation of this encompassing circle for four marks. Well, if that's the diameter of the bigger circle, then its centre would have to lie on this line somewhere. And since we know the components of that translation that goes from one centre to the other, you could find that. So the big circle would have to circle around. I don't know if it's necessary just to try and draw that in. Yeah, that's not very good. But the main point is, this circle, the diameter of this circle, will be the sum of the diameters of those two. So the radius of this circle will be the sum of the radii of those two. So I could put that down first of all. R3 must be equal to R1 plus R2. So that must be 5 plus 15, which was 20. 
That was a mark, not the very first mark in the marking scheme. That was down about the third mark. Just seems to me we sort that out first of all, because then if its radius is 20, and the radius of this one is 15, that means that this portion here is 5, which means this portion is 15, since the distance between the centres is 20. So calling that part C3, my reasoning was, I'm calling that C2 and that C1, my reasoning was that C2, C3, the distance between their centres would be 20 take away 15, which is 5, and C1, C3 would be the 20 minus that 5, which is 15, which means that C3 divides C1, C2 in the ratio of 15 to 5, which is 3 to 1. Now arriving at that ratio was a mark. Then to actually find that centre is only one mark. Whereas that would be that sort of whole question, find the coordinates of a point that divides a line in a given ratio. It's just one mark, and it's just one mark just for almost stating it according to the marking scheme there, because there's no preferred technique for this. So you could do it whichever way you like, you could do it that ratio way. You could say, oh, C1, C3 to C3, C2 is 3 to 1, and then you do all those subtractions so on. Or you could leap straight in with the section formula, that would be just as good. Or you could just make a statement that it's, if that's 3 to 1, it must be 3 quarters of the way along going from C1 to C2. So the displacement C1, C3 is going to be 3 quarters of the 12, 16. So that's going to be 9, 12. So from C1, go along 9 and go up 12. You could set out the vector way or you could just say this. C3 is going to be starting at C1, which is at negative 3, negative 5. Following this would be plus 9, plus 12. So the centre is going to be 6, 7. That's worth a mark. Whichever way you do it. However you set it out. And the last mark is just for stating the equation. Now that's the easy bit, because you just put these two things together. The equation of the circle is going to be x minus the x-coordinate squared, y minus the y-coordinate squared is the radius squared, but don't leave it as 20 squared, make it into 400, and that's the fourth mark.